personal finance practice problem using Excel. Life insurance using personal financial statements, part number four, gross income method. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we've basically been building this from a blank sheet in prior presentations, starting with the balance sheet and then two formats of the income statement. This time, we're gonna look at method number one, for the life insurance needs calculation. If you do have access to this worksheet, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. Example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information's on the left-hand side. We constructed a balance sheet and an income statement, our personal financial statements to help us out with our calculations for the life insurance. The income statement we had constructed on an accrual myth method and more of a cash flow type of method. Now we're going to use that to construct our life insurance calculations. We'll start off with kind of a more basic life insurance calculation. We'll get into a little bit more complex calculation. Then we will add our uh, mortgage loan calculations for the amortization table, breaking it down on a year by year basis. This will be in future presentations. And then we'll use that to get to a more complex life insurance calculation that we might use for more complex, say, term life insurance that might like decline over over time. So that's going to be where we're going to go. The second tab, practice tab, has a pre-formatted worksheet so you can work through the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The third tab, the blank tab, we've been building from scratch here. So we, we made our financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement, two formats of the income statement. We're going to use that to do our life insurance calculation and we'll show this in a couple different ways. So first I want a skinny S column. Skinny S, that's where we need to start here. So I'm going to go to the home tab. Uh, let's go to the skinny O. I'm going to paintbrush the skinny O to the skinny S. Home tab, paintbrush, and skinny S. So we got the same skinniness for the O and the S. And so this is going to be the insurance uh, needed. This is going to be method. Let's just call it method number one. Method one. And I'll make this a little bit wider for column T. Let's make that a little bit wider here. Something like that. And then I'm going to select from T1 to V1 and make that our header format, which is in the home tab, font group, bucket drop down, black and white has been our format. Now we're going to start off with basically the first part is going to be related to what we think our, our needs are from a cash flow standpoint uh, from year to year. So if we were to die and someone was dependent in part on our income, how would we first think about how much income they would need, for example, for the years going forward on a cash flow basis? And then we could tack on top of that goals that we're looking to save for, such as college tuition, retirement, for example, and that kind of stuff. So first, we're going to start with this method using the, the times yearly income, uh, income method. So I'm going to say we'll base this on the income. So this first kind of component, there's multiple ways we could do this, right? We could say, okay, I'm gonna take a look at this spouse, the spouse that makes more money, that's the one that's going to die. So if, we, if that one died, they would be losing that income. We could base then this yearly needs for the other spouse that would be living based on that income. We could use that income to calculate, some fraction of that income to calculate, or we might use the expenses that we got down here on an accrual basis method, or we might use more of a cash basis method for the expenses. And that will depend in part, if I scroll back on over and we see that we have the assets minus the liabilities, we might first decide, could I just pay off the liabilities? Maybe I could set up my life insurance to be enough that we could pay off the liabilities. And then I might say simply base my calculation for the yearly needs after that point based on the expenses not including the cash flow for any liability payments or I might say hey look I want to make my my year by year calculation based on the total expenses including those liability payments assuming that they're just going to keep the things as they are and pay off the liabilities as they come due according to the current loan structures or we might say, hey, look, we're good right now with the 60,000. I would like to keep keep the spouse at the same uh, basic uh, income level or threshold and just base the calculation based on the 60,000 
on uh, the earnings or possibly some fraction of the earnings. So we'll look at a couple different methods as we think about different methods. This first one, we're gonna base on the gross uh, income. So I'm gonna say the yearly income, yearly income of the spouse that, that would pass away, we're gonna say is this 60,000, spouse number two. That's who we're concerned about. Then we have the number of years that they're gonna need that income for. Again, multiple ways we can get this calculation. We might say, how many years would I have that income in practice until retirement, for example? And then past that, think about the retirement needs for the spouse as a separate goal-oriented component. Or I might think about how many years my spouse has till retirement. Or I might think about how many years until the children, the youngest child possibly reaches age 18. And then after that point, I could think about other things, targeted goals like tuition like retirement for the spouse for example or i can use a generic heuristic which would be like seven to ten years for example so i'm going to say that we'll base it on the youngest child here we're going to say okay the youngest child uh, has 10 years to, before they're 18 and out of the house or at least go into college and then we'll figure out the college calculations if we're going to add that so we're going to say there's 10 years so i'm going to say years years i'm going to say is equal to 10 so we'll just say 10 down here on the years and there we have it we're going to underline that i'm going to put an underline bracket and underline and i'll multiply that out this is going to be the 60,000 times 10 and that's going to be the 600,000. and this is going to be i'll say this is just the times i'll copy it down let's just copy that control c and paste it down here get rid of the colon do some indentation selecting these three home tab alignment indent i could select this item alignment and indent again now notice in prior presentations we also thought that you could take a fraction of that six hundred thousand and say well i'm not going to be around therefore maybe i could take a heuristic fraction like a 70 percent and or notice that this is saying that they would need 600,000 in order to get 60,000 for the next 10 years. But that's not necessarily the case because if they got 600,000 in a lump sum, they could invest it and basically get, get possibly a return on that. So we could get into more complex calculations in terms of what would be the annuity or what lump sum would we need in order for them to draw out 60,000 per year. So this is kind of a more of a generic calculation and so we'll get into more depth on it in, in future presentations to get into some of those questions. But that's the first part. And then we got the estimated cost. So we got the estimated costs, we'll say above daily, daily living costs, costs. And so then we might do a calculation. I'm going to have a sub calculation. I'm going to call this for dependence and retirement, retirement, for example. So we might say for the dependents, we might say we have something like college tuition. So college tuition might be a targeted goal. Now we had five kids we listed out here, but I'm just gonna like do it on one on one child, one calculation for one special child. We're gonna say that's gonna be that last child's gonna go to college. But I'm gonna say it's 35,000. So 35, this is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna to go to the left here and say, this is for the special last child that had that 10 years till they get to college. And we're gonna assume that it's 35,000. Now the college tuition gets a little tricky too, because we could say, hey, look, uh, if it costs 35,000 now, how much is it gonna cost 10 years? I could use a future value calculation to get to how much it's gonna cost 10 years from now but I don't necessarily need to put in the college tuition for that future cost because uh, if they got the money at this point in time and I died, they could save it, possibly put it in, into a savings account, get a return, hopefully that's increasing over inflation to reach that targeted goal. But it gets, it, so it's a little, there's gonna be some confusion in terms of what when I would die and how much money we would have to put in in order to reach the targeted goal of the college tuition. So a generic number might be say simply today's college costs so that when I die, they can invest it, hopefully at least getting the, the rate of inflation in order to pay for the college when, when you need it. But we could get into more in-depth calculations about that, which we'll talk about 
in future presentations. And we might have added childcare. So if we die, then they might need uh, more childcare, for example, over and above the expenses. So, so let's say that we added the nanny cost of the 3,600 a month, let's say, or 3,600 that was, well, we're gonna say that's for the year. So I'm gonna say that's for the year. So nanny costs, I'll just say that's gonna be the 3,600 that we'll tack on as well. And then we might have a retirement, retirement uh, that we're gonna, we wanna help out with as well. So retirement, retirement. So, so again, this calculation up top represents the cash flow needed for that year is possibly up till retirement or possibly up until the child reaches 18 or whatever. And then we might say, okay, I'd like to help with my spouse's retirement in some way. And we might have multiple methods we can think about how we would do that or how we would get to that. It would be a same kind of targeted approach that we might use for retirement. We might just, or we might say, I would like to basically be able to contribute. I'm gonna come up with just a random number, which is gonna be 500 thousand for the retirement to, to put that in place to help with the retirement but the point is here that it would be a targeted type of thing that we might be able to put in over and above the cash flow that would be needed for the day-to-day -day operations uh up top that we would tack on so so i won't get into that in more detail here we'll talk more about like this college tuition uh, as a targeted kind of component that we could treat in a similar way in future presentations. So let's go to the home tab. Let's go to the font group. Let's underline. So this is going to be the the total added costs. I'm going to sum that up in the outer column equals the sum of these and enter. So there we have that. Okay. Actually, we'll talk about the retirement as a targeted goal too when we get into the to more complex calculation of it. But in any case, there we go. So then we've got the emergency fund. I'm going to say emergency funds six months of expenses six months expenses now notice that because we base this on the sixty thousand and not really a needs basis the expenses method then they might already have enough kind of to clear to clear an emergency fund in that case because because we're we're having the full income here but uh, we might we might then add you know a six month emergency fund for six months would be a, a, a general heuristic type of number. Let's do some indentation here by the way. Let's select these three. Alignment indent. Let's indent this one again. Alignment indent again. So we might say that I would say I would want to take my yearly expenses, yearly expenses. So let's not base it on the income this time. Our income. Let's say. We want to take our yearly expenses and I'll do it on the cash flow basis method. So that would include the mortgage and the credit card. So the cash flow that would be needed for a year, for example. And then I'm going to say that we have the added nanny costs for the year. Nanny costs that are over and above what we're currently paying, which I'm going to assume that might be in place if I was to pass away in order to, to keep the job going. And so then that would be the total a uh, yearly yearly expenses equals the sum of those two and then i'm going to take half of that half of that for the emergency fund and that's going to be our emergency fund i'm going to copy this top number paste it down here double click on this cell get rid of the colon at the end and then we'll take this to the outer column this will be equal to the 44820 divided by the two to get us to the 22 uh, for 10. Okay, so let's do an indentation here. So I'm gonna say indent on these, alignment indent, I'll indent this one again. And so on top of that, we also might have the funeral costs, funeral expenses, expenses estimated. Now this is something that we could possibly take care of some of this and preset our, our funeral kind of arrangements up beforehand right and then and then maybe we could take care of it possibly that way but or we can try to estimate how much you know our funeral expenses would be just burn me up and throw me in a coffee can for crying out loud how much can it be for so but in any case this is going to be three thousand five eight thousand five hundred is going to be over here so here's the eight thousand five hundred we're going to assume that's going to be a one-time cost so notice it's not going to be up here because these are the yearly costs these are our targeted goal costs. These are the added 
costs for the emergency fund, which is kind of a one-time kind of calculation. And then we've got our one-time cost of the 8,500 just to just to get rid of my stinky corpse so that you can move on. So at any case, so we're gonna say then this is gonna be, that's gonna be the 8,500. So the estimated, estimated families, uh, F financial needs financial needs then it's going to be the sum of all these the sum of this outer column sum of this outer column so we've got the income needs the cash flows they'll need and then the targeted goals and then the emergency fund and that one-time need for our funeral expenses so then you might say okay but we already have some liquid assets over here so if i look at the balance sheet we might say that's what they would need, but I already have, you know, these assets they could they could pay for part of that, and so we could say that uh, that. And notice the way we did this: we're saying we're not really calculating the pain off of all the liabilities at the time of death, but rather we're kind of calculating it on a cash flow basis, imagining that we could still continue to kind of uh, pay those items off, and we already have on the cash flow side of things this this uh 395 and possibly have access to this 24,000. notice we don't really have access to these assets down here we could possibly tap into them by taking equity on the home or something like that but these assets are kind of not going to be helpful to us to take care of those cash flow needs for the most part so considering these liabilities we kind of took into consideration by by mapping out and thinking they're going to be part of the of the payment structure for our income that we that we added so now we could say well we already have these assets on the books so maybe i could subtract those out now remember the current assets are something that they have access to at this point in time the ira and the something that under the 401k plan there could be tax implications if there's death benefits on it and you have to determine as, is this your IRA or the spouse's IRA? I mean, do they have access to it at the point of retirement? You know, how, how, how much access do they have? But we're gonna assume that they're gonna have access to these two at least at some point. So they got a cash flow of this 63.5. So if we're saying that this is the total cash flow, the total cash flow they have, then we could say, okay, let's, we're gonna take out the liquid assets that they already have access to. So I'm going to just add them one at a time here. I'm going to say we got the checking account. We got the checking account currently. And then I'm going to copy that down. And so like this emergency fund, you might be saying, hey, look, when I calculated this, you might say, but yeah, they already have an emergency fund set up. That's right. But I'm kind of calculating the full, you know, cash flow needs. And then we'll subtract out what's already on the balance sheet, right? That's kind of the idea. And then I'll also include the IRA assuming they either have act they have access to the ira at the point of death possibly uh depending on whose ira it is and tax consequences for estate planning and age at death and so on so then we're going to go to the alignment and indent i need the numbers too you need the numbers too you can't just pull over the name so we'll pick up the number which is going to be that three thousand and so I'll copy that down on the 3000, put my cursor on the fill handle, copy it down. I can't copy it to the IRA because there's another, I think I can take the IRA and copy it to the right, auto fill it to the right. And no, I can't do that either. Whatever, I have to do it this way. I was trying to make it easy, but no, but no, the IRA has to be a problem. It's over here in the 24, it's in the outer column, that's why. So there it is, let's go ahead and format paint this down because I messed up the formatting too let's put an underline here underline and this is going to be then the total liquid assets I'm going to copy this up top put it down below and just put a total in front of it total liquid assets and again remember that that last category the IRA is the one you might want to put a little bit more thought into but alignment indent twice outer column equals the sum of those four so we got the 65 63 5 already in place so then we're going to say the life insurance needed is going to be equal to the 1 million 169 total minus the 63 uh, 5. so that's one method that we can kind of use font group underline 
notice that this method is kind of calculating things as of this point in time, right? And so you would think that as I get closer to like retirement or the kid, the, the youngest child reaches college, that my life insurance needs would go down, right? And that's why some term policies might have lowering life insurance as time passes. So we could think about that in a little bit more depth. We thought about the fact that this 600,000 is based is based on you know the 10 year factor and we could calculate that multiple different different ways and think about what would happen as time passes. We talked about these targeted goals being these are pretty, you know, just an estimate of the target goals, but we could uh, we could get more detailed into those calculations and and then and so we, and we can also think about this as if what if I tried to first pay off the liabilities, right? Pay off the liabilities, which would be nice, and then think about what my cash flow needs would be afterwards, and or think about the cash flow needs on on an expense basis rather than an income basis. So there's a whole lot of different ways we can imagine this, and we'll talk a little bit more about them in future presentations. For now, let's just wrap this up, wrap it up, put a put a bow on it. You can't wrap it up without having a bow on it. If you're going to wrap it, you might as well go all the way. We're going to put a, the brackets around it. We're going to put the bucket. If you don't have that blue right there, it's in the more, it's in standard and that blue right there. Blue, that's the one I typically use. And then we'll put a double underline maybe down here, home tab and font group, double underline. Let's then go to the review and spell check it families okay if that's what you say spell checker retirement emergency emergency all right i'm cool with those spell checks so that looks good so we'll continue on with another method next time